to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. James. Uh, just waiting. Just what waiting. is going on today? <laughs> Nothing. What is going just on today? Waiting for you today? to fix your cap. Ah, my, my ball your cap. Your hair and your cap. Well, look, you chop off some of Swayze like that. You're going to have to wear a cap. For a couple weeks, you know. Uh, I'm waiting for you to come in and give me the old Sam's. Yep. Fantastic Sam's look. Mm-hmm. Sammy's. Mm-hmm. Sammy Davis Jr. Super cut. G- yeah. g- give you a super cut. What a crazy day today. Is it crazy? Today? It is absolutely crazy. What's up? Um, what isn't happening? We'll start with the Adam Sandler trailer. What? Just when watch that. When you see Adam Sandler trending number one, you're like, whoa, what's going on now? What did he do? Finally. I, look, I, I've shit on Sandler on the show numerous times, um, but... I will champion people when they make great shit. And the trailer, his new movie trailer, Uncut Gems, which is a uh, all intents and purposes, seems to be a fucking hardcore drama. Yeah. I am in it, dude. Dude. Congratulations, Adam Sandler. It looks fucking good. Because I look, you and I both liked him from Punch Drunk Love, right? Yeah, and it felt like that's kind of the stuff he was trying to do a little Should've. bit. Spanglish. Punch drunk, like a more serious yeah. guy. Um, but then he just went right back into his fucking bullshit. Well, look, that money's hard to walk away from. Absolutely. Obviously, Absolutely. but uh, he could have gone the Jonah Hill route is what I thought of mm-hmm. one for them, one for me, one for them, something one for me. Something serious, something yeah. whatever. You know, yeah. you do, what was the end of the world movie he did, Jonah Hill? Or he turned into a zombie. Oh, it might have just been called the I end of the world. I think it's end of the world. Yeah. Um, I'll check. Either way. Yeah. Uh, you do that, and then you do Moneyball. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. You and can then switch. You do... and, and Sandler, to me, is better at that. Oh, yes. So better when I saw this freaking... trailer, yeah. man, way to go, Adam Sandler. I'm amped for this. Real amped for this. This is in my wheelhouse, too. You got Kevin Garnett and Mike Francesca. Like, you, you've... Is this about... It's a gambling movie. Okay, but is it about a real person? I don't know. Okay. I don't know, but the trailer was lights out. Um, oh, yes. It's one of those ones where it's so good that you're right. You go back and look at it, and you're like, hey, man, is this a real person? Do I need to read this book? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, whew, that, that started off the morning real nice. Um, Looking forward to it. December, unfortunately. So What's December? That's when it's coming out. I'm fine with that. Oh. I'm fine with that. He's going for Oscars. He's going for Oscars. That's okay. that's when you do that. This is the end. But yeah. Uh, this is the end. Is that the name of the other movie? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's when you go for that. And if, if he's going all in. Yeah. Why not? It's it's a weak year. He could absolutely be nominated for that. Okay. Oh, that would be. Crazy, be, right? It'd be crazy, but it'd be a body of work situation. Come on. Been at it for a long time. He has. Pumping yes. it out for a long time. 25 years close yeah. to. Yeah. 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 And fairly uh, unscathed as far as no. like. No, what? no, no. Oh, it's personal life? Personally. I think it meant just, review wise. It was like he was oh, scathed. But look, if you do that many things and pump them out, like you're going to get good and bad, right? Yeah. You're going to get hammered. So, it doesn't really matter what you do. Anything in this life, you're going to get fucking hammered in the public. Absolutely. Because, um, you know, look, as, as much as I don't like the movie, he's the movies he's made for Netflix. Um then you take like Hotel Transylvania, right? I know. Those are great. I know. And people Those movies love are great. them. I know. Adults and kids love I them. I know. That was one movie as a parent where you're like, all right, yeah, I, I dig this. Like I can sit and watch this a hundred times or how, however many times a kid he's wants to got, watch it. He's got the formula down now, right? So he's got the formula of making like a comedy for Netflix, a an animated like. Right. Uh, a buddy comedy, some weird shit like that. He has the formula down at this point. Yeah, so it yeah. kind of looks like with this new one, he's stepping out of line a little bit, which I like. Well, I think he had a three picture deal with Netflix, mm-hmm. right? That was 20 million a pop or 30 million a pop uh, for each movie. And then there was a window 
where it could be re-upped or not, and I heard it was, but he probably made this dramatic film within that window where it was like, okay. hey man, I'm gonna go and do this movie real quick and then I'll come back on my bullshit. Right. Um, don't put out anything else until this comes out so I can go for my Oscar and then I'll go back to, you know, whatever it is. Whatever my favorite destination. How amazing. Like whatever that. my favorite vacation destination is. Yeah, that is I want to film my a movie, movie there yeah. and I don't begrudge him. I don't either. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then do what you want to do. Yeah. At that point. Hey man. Who the fuck cares? We talk about it all the time. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. It, I'm not, you know, a personal fan of of some of those, but uh it is what it is. Uh, whatever. Whatever. I'm uh, sure he's not a personal fan of some of those too. I but wonder. He's got to get it out. I wonder if he'd sit down and ever talk about it and be like, "Hey man." You know, if you have a three yeah. <laughs> you have a three picture deal, it's like but if you're only doing one a year, oh, yeah. man, I can't tell you how amazing that would be. Yes, and yeah. how much easier that would make my life. Mm -hmm. Like, if if somebody just said, "Hey, man, you only have to do one a year," and I could fully concentrate on it. I that. don't care what it is. I don't care what kind of weird ass concept. Hey, you Ross, no fucking... books, no podcasts, no traveling, no interviews. Just do one movie a year and make it the best you can with that kind of budget. It'd be lights out. You'd be seeing some what was his wild budget shit for from each me. one? Um, they're usually in about the sixty range, okay. um, and that's including his fees. So, you know, sixty to eighty somewhere in there, depending upon who else is in it. I think the last one was a Jennifer Aniston, so that's yeah. obviously going to bump up your budget a little bit. And Netflix mm -hmm. is, is more than happy to get her, probably. Sure. So I'm sure uh, they're fine on that one. But um, yeah, man. You know Daddy would have started with that Ric Flair biopic and called it a day. Oh, I was so pissed when that Hulk Hogan one. I saw that one getting made. Uh, that would have been my, my first out of What's the gates. What's the status on that one? You know, I would imagine it's going to take time to beef up for something like that. Like, right. Look, the Hemsworth kid is, is jacked, but not that jacked. Like, oh, he's got a, you think he's got a beef up? I think he's got a triple stack for that. Okay. I think you got to go D-Ball. Right. I think you got to go D ball for that shit. Old school Florida steroids, like I'm gonna 80s be very, Florida steroids. I'm very, very surprised if he is good. Yeah. Oh, it's Hulk Hogan. It's a big personality to take on. Really surprised. Everybody, the Zac Efron with fucking Ted Bundy thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone was like, "Look." Did you see it? No. Well, I saw. I'm surprised you didn't breeze through that. I tried to, and I just can't. Can't with, get into it. Yeah. No, Zac. It, it's Zac Efron. No, I know. Do you know, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not, you can't, you're not lost in the character. Right, I'm with you. It's fucking Zac Efron, and I do believe with this Hemsworth guy, look, I'm a, I'll give it a chance. You throw Emile Hirsch in that, that Zac Efron role, you probably would have been golden. Absolutely. Yeah. Something like that. Hey, you choke somebody at Sundance, what are you going to do? Getting a but you go, bald. yeah, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm going with this. <laughs> Zac Efron, you just go like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Just go away. Nice and, guy but in real everyone life. was nice like, guy in real life. I don't know. I think he can do I know. it. I know. I know you might be surprised. I know. And I said, okay, I'll be surprised. Good dude in real life. But uh, yeah. No. I'm sure he's a fine, he's an okay guy. I don't know if he's a great, a good dude. Yeah, he's got his own personal demons, but that's, you know, but never went public with. Dude. Yeah, never trashed a trailer or, you know, did shit like that. So, okay. Yeah, behind the scenes shit that he kept to himself. That's okay. the thing. If okay. you're going to, like, don't go Shia LaBeouf with it. Don't go public with it where you're, you know, pissing in a, or smoking in a fucking play in New York in the seats. <laughs> Here's when you can go Shia on it. When you're Shia. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you are that good. Put Shia in that role. It, and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. he's getting, he might have killed somebody just to fucking get into character. Yeah, and why not? you can, go, you can, like, you're thinking that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I want to be like, did he? With Zach Efron, you know for a fact he didn't. I personally like all the weird shit Shy was doing. I love it. Where he was showing up. Remember when he screened all of his movies in a row for like 24 hours straight? I love it. it I love great. the paper bag on the head. I love the getting arrested in the streets <laughs> for, you know, <laughs> minor infractions. Minor, yeah. minor infractions. Uh, yelling at somebody or being like <coughs> drunk in public. Like, I love all of that. Yeah. I love that. So, but I, I love it because he's amazing. 
we have this conversation all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have it all the time. And uh, shy can either do way. no wrong. Yeah, yeah. In my we're, eyes. we're we're shy fans. Um, and uh, look, I'm I am a Sandler fan when he does shit like this. So I'm I'm amped for it. I'm amped for it. Uh, today's a big day, Jabes. Big day indeed. Uh, they're they're talking about impeachment. Four o'clock today. There's a meeting. Uh, they got 159. Right now, Dems and counting on that side, they're going to take a vote and see if they're trying to going to try to go after him here. For what this time, the Biden. So there thing. was a yeah, there was a whistleblower who was like, uh, "This is a security thing." Where he was on the phone with the Ukrainian president mm-hmm. and asked uh, for some information on Biden's kid um, about this uh, being on this board that he wasn't supposed to be on, or mm-hmm. to try to get this deal done, this business deal done, or whatever. And uh, to me, it's a constitutional gray zone. Like, I don't know if that's breaking the law, and I haven't heard anybody else say it. Well, clearly they they know. No, no one really knows. That, that's why there's no, you know, people are meeting and stuff. But like, oh, okay, no one really knows, which is why there's again there's this meeting at four o'clock today. Okay, I don't know what the rules are in that. Um, you know, if you're talking to a president and they hired somebody's kid from america to do something mm-hmm. like what is that because i know don jr went through that shit when he what uh during the last the, the russia hoax or whatever like mm-hmm. you know they had him in there and they weren't asking him about it but what what is the uh, it is the same thing with don jr's kid and the same thing with biden's kid right i don't know what you can do with that information because it's somebody's kid mm-hmm. and it's somebody's child and so what it, it, like every party's trying to get dirt on one another um is that an impeachable offense? I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I guess they'll they'll figure it out or I find guess. all the. Find right now, my my biggest and, and I guess Pelosi is going to be holding this meeting at four o'clock today. Uh, my biggest worry, I, I guess, for the if you go all in on this, if you're the Democratic Party, I mean, because you're with this, you're just burying the headlines for all of your candidates right now. Mm-hmm. If they go through with this. Your candidates will have nothing for the next year. They will get no airtime, no press, no CNN, no MSNBC. It will be wall-to-wall Trump coverage. And I think this would probably just energize his base Mm -hmm. and be like, we fucking knew it. It's a goddamn witch hunt, whatever. Like, To me, this is probably the worst move they could make. Mm -hmm. I would have put all your eggs into this next election, whatever candidate that is. So we'll see. I'm really, really curious about this to see what happens. But I wonder if they want to get the impeachment underway so that someone else can come in. So well, that they can use it in their... If you, if you won outright in 2020, you don't need an impeachment, right? And if, yeah. as we saw with Clinton in 99 or whenever that impeachment started, mm-hmm. he never left office, no. right? And he got impeached. Uh, but I think it was his second term, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 But look, man, if you're going to do it, then... Oof. What's to what's to stop him from you know getting another VP in there? Whatever, whatever's going to happen. Trump. Yeah, because there's been talk of that. Of there's what? Sw- him switching VPs possibly. So, okay. I wonder what what, what's that your what, uh, do like for him. Uh, the rumor that I heard was that possibly he was looking to swap him, swap uh, Pence out with, uh, with that chick, with that Nikki Haley. Oh. So I'm not I sure. I don't know what that would do. I'm not sure. Because like, I always go back to that for me personally, right? She just left. Mm-hmm. She left her job, and she was great at it and had no, no issues whatsoever. Love the president. Did she see something on the horizon? And if, let's say he does get impeached, right? Right. Does she pop in there and run for 2020? I always wondered that in the back of my mind, too. Yeah, I don't know. That would be crazy. It would be crazy, but I don't really know. So that's going on. It's going on now. All of this is going on today. And so I guess it just keeps getting wilder and wilder. So I don't know what the answer is. I was at uh, the gymnasium this morning just blasting my quads. And oh, my, quads and only, All of my huh? thighs, yeah. Quads only. All of my thighs. Sure, Jesse, sure. all of my thighs. Sure, sure, sure. And it was, you know, on every single network, obviously, um, about this. So, I don't know. 
that I know it's going to happen. They've been after him since day one, so it's it's not yeah. that big of a shock. But uh, but it was the same. It, like I said, it's it was the same vibe with uh, Quentin. They hated him, hated him, hated him, hated him. Just needed one. I don't know that thing. they did. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't remember them the hating Republican, Clinton. Yeah, it was the they, it was the Monica Lewinsky thing that got got him trapped. They hated him before that. So the stock market was dealing. I mean, we were the economy was going well. So is with Trump. But when no, you I know, hate somebody, you just hate them. And the Republicans so. hated them in the same way that the Democrats are hating Trump. I guess so, yeah. Cause and I didn't, it was just mm. leading up to, and that's why they were looking so hard. If everything's all good, they're not looking really for anything to impeach you. Well, look. But they treated him the same way. They talked about him the same way. They made fun of him the same way. I didn't, because here's the thing. I, obviously, I wasn't a big fan of the Clintons, but... I remember when he was in office and everything was going well. I was like, eh, great. Let him finish it out. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Well, the market was riding high. Everybody was doing well. That's you and me, which is like, hey, if our money's okay, yeah. I don't really give a shit. I don't shit. really give a shit. And the other, because the but, other thing too is like, I'm with you on that of looking for something. I didn't give a shit about the Monica Lewinsky thing either. Yeah. So when I, I re-listened to that um, slow burn podcast that kind of went through the whole thing and was how like, was it by the way you talked about it on this show was it good yeah it's good but you you revisit it and you're like holy shit yeah like like i said they made fun of him in the same way mm -hmm. hated him in the same way it was just on the other side right um would try and block everything he did hated everything about them um, and just was looking and looking looking for some weird little business deal because they had so many they had so much money and they had so many things, uh, real estate, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot going on. Watergate. So, <laughs> um, Whitewater, sorry. But, uh, mm. so it's like the same sort of deal, but you forget about that. The Republicans handle it in a different way where the Democrats now hate, hate the president, but they're just so fucking whiny. Whereas the Republicans hated him and they just got shit fucking done about it, basically. And it was all dirty and it was a different time and they definitely yeah, look, it's like politics. It's all fucking disgusting. Completely cornered Monica Lewinsky and like they they really went after whatever they could because they hated him and that's just how it goes. Well, I don't know what's gonna happen with this one. Um, but you want to talk about whiny? Uh, the other thing that's dangerous too is trotting out that little girl last night. What happened? So the, the, the climate change, the 16-year-old girl from Sweden. That what? Um, she came out and gave two like crazy inspirational speeches about climate change mm -hmm. to the UN. And uh, her name is Greta. She's literally everywhere right now. Okay. Um, and they were like, this girl, give her the Nobel Peace Prize. Give her the thing or whatever. There's a lot of people, though, that are saying... Hey man, this could end up being a bad thing. Like if your parents drove this into your head, yeah, that young, and you're able to do this, like, what are you doing to your children at that point? So I don't know, man. It, it's strange because it was like a little thirty-five-year-old person. I don't, I don't need to hear from children. <laughs> when the whole fucking those kid activists remember about yeah. the guns, yeah. I don't need that. Doesn't that does absolutely nothing for me? <laughs> Who else said that? Bill Burr. It was Bill Burr or uh, Louis C.K. It was just like, man, I don't need, I don't need to hear about some child activists. It might have been Louis C.K. Possibly Bill Burr. I don't know if I'm hearing anything from Louis uh, these days, but it was something like that. But it's true. I mean, yeah. I just don't. Uh. -uh. Greta Thunberg is her name. I'm good. And uh, she's the one who, who got up and spoke. So, And what did she just say? Save my life? Make the... Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, essentially that the, the world's going to end and, and all that other shit with mm -hmm. the environment and did everything else. Did she have else. any, like, facts and... Um... Yeah, look, she was great. Okay. Um, but it was weird. You know, it's weird to see a 16-year-old. And it was written and... for her or she wrote it? I don't know. Or we're not sure. It said Greta and the, like, the adults guiding her are seeking a shift uh, in almost all the focus from personal responsibility to governments and big corporations to enact all these environmental reforms. Again, as a child, you don't really know 
what's Fox News calls her mentally ill. Well, <laughs> I don't know which side Fox is going on these days either, man. To be honest with you, who knows? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. So, look, if you give that much responsibility to a child at that young of an age, and let's say they end up being a colossal disappointment, holy shit, man. That's uh, it's a big deal to me, you know? I just don't like seeing that. <laughs> Man, I wouldn't give anything to my kids. Let them do it. <laughs> I would just be like, can you just... Just like, wait till calm. 22, 23. Just calm. Let's, let's then make some, some speeches and some decisions then. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, eh. What makes her an expert? That's the thing. That's it. That's like it's an it's an impassioned speech. It's the and same with the kids, uh, the the Parkland. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. You go. I understand it was a traumatizing thing, but I'm not sure what kind of expertise it gave you on intricacies intricacies of the gun laws. Right. 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 And we we were talking. So what is? Her, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So what is her, what what she has a degree. I don't. I don't know. No. What is it? Okay. She has no. She's not a Doogie Hauser. Okay. She's not a doctor. Okay. Or a scientist. So. Okay. So. That was is, cute. Yep. Yep. She's a child. She mm-hmm. is a child talking about big government needs to do this. So, I did not know anything about big government. I Sixteen. Don't, I don't subscribe. No. I knew about uh, Zima. Yeah. At Sixteen. Knew a lot about that. Yeah. Um, particularly that it wasn't a twist off. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. It was. I knew about 40s. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was more on the 40 train. Oh yeah, I could see that. Oh yeah, you could see that. 40s and bologna sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mickey. Old oh e. yeah. A little OE to get yeah, the day started. Yeah, brother. Kick it up. Kick it steel up. Steel reserve. But yeah, I think steel you, reserve. I think you're gonna see more and more of this. Um, but God, man, this girl has been everywhere on social media. I mean, just absolutely. Of course, everywhere. she has. So, I don't know, man. Because if it's another adult talking about it, we don't give a shit. They're going to try whatever they can. Yeah, because there's this huge UN summit. Like, 70 countries are there, and they're, they're vowing to do something or whatever. It's like, look, man, unless you can fix what the pollution China and, and India is going to do, mm-hmm. because there's no regulations on those two fucking countries, and those are the biggest in the world, what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do with all this, Jabes? I don't know. Uh, Kanye. Kanye is at it again. I know we just talked about him last episode, yeah, but he's what's back. Up? This Sunday service, this last one, 4,800 people to this tiny town, Cody, Wyoming. Came. So they are coming. Oh, yeah. Is it his church yet or the church there? No. Okay. So they set it up on the side of this thing in this town, uh-huh. um, and uh, his church is not open. So I, wanna, I wanted to clarify that from the audience on the last okay. one because I looked into it, and I was like, What's happening? And I don't know what's happening. I, allegedly, again, there's an album supposed to be coming out on Friday. It's a gospel album. Um, I don't know anything about what. what I mean, if, we'll it's, if it's like the Sunday service, it could be dope. So we'll see. Yeah. But there was a thing that went out today for Detroit. And it said for all singers um, that are trained or whatever who want to be a part of this, please be available for, for rehearsal Thursday and Friday. And I guess they're going to do something. Uh, in Detroit this next week, but uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Who knows? I don't know what I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's all a big PR thing for the album too. Saying you're going to start a church and doing the gospel and all that stuff. Like, I think he really is starting the church. Well, again, tax wise, it would make sense, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Rick Rubin was spotted yesterday there, chilling at a just like a, a diner. In Wyoming. Yeah. Hmm. So they're, they're last, I heard they were working on last minute tweaks to the album. So you got Rick Rubin out there. He's gotten everybody to come out to Wyoming. I mean, according to you, it's gorgeous, right? It is gorgeous. Why wouldn't you go out there? I guess. Yeah. I don't, I just didn't see Rick Rubin ever leave in Malibu, I guess. It was strange seeing him outside of his zen oh, shit, yeah. you know? White linen wearing. Mm-hmm. 
yoga pose yeah. on the side of the mountain. And he was at why like an outdoor restaurant with. Uh... <laughs> why would you ever leave there? There is something to building your own compound like that. When we watch that doc, we watched a couple docs with Rick, Rick Rubin. Yeah, in it. yeah, they definitely have been carting him out a little bit. Well, I don't think it's his intention. I no, no, no. It's just because of everybody no. he works with. Yeah, and yeah. Just He's like, just hey, everywhere. I think that it comes with the gig of being Rip, Rick Rubin where you're like, all right, cool. Because we saw him. And in, having that place. I mean, yeah. who doesn't want to film at that fucking Shangri-La, right? I know. Because we saw him in the Jay-Z doc. We saw him in the Lady Gaga doc. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there'll the be something The Avid Brothers? Yeah, oh, yeah. He's in like every, any music documentary at this point. He has some kind of hand in it, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I had a, a conversation with, uh, you know, one of our friend of the show is one of the biggest music video producers in, in L.A. Okay. And uh, probably the biggest, I would say. Probably mm -hmm. got the biggest company. Mm -hmm. Called him up yesterday because him and I always share new bands, you know. Um, usually he's ahead of the curve, obviously, because yeah. he's, he's always looking for the next big thing to try to get him in or whatever. And mm -hmm. I said, hey, man. Oh, check out this Barnes Courtney. Check out this Barnes Courtney kid. And he was like, really? And I was like, look, when's the last time I called you about an artist? Right. And he goes. Uh, Had to be a long time. Yeah, we were we were thinking about it out loud on the phone. He was like, "Man, I think it was probably 2011 or 12." Cuz I know what he does for a living, obviously. Right. And I'm like, "Look, I'm not I'm not in that world. I listen to a lot of music, but right. across the board of, of all genres, but I'm not in your world." You know, and I figured he's the messiah of this. He would have already known. And he was mm -hmm. just like, "No." And he like it was mid-afternoon, you know, and he was he was at a lunch and he goes, "All right, I'll fucking look this guy up. I'll call you back uh -huh. in, like in, in, in a couple hours or whatever, right? Right. Phone rings 45 minutes later. And he's just like, I, 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 don't, I don't understand. I, I don't. I was like, I didn't understand. I've never seen this fucking kid either. Yeah. He's a rock star. He's a goddamn he's a rock star. He's a rock star, dude. And he goes, and then he, he Brandon was able to find about. a video. Oh, shit. I just said his name, but fuck it. Uh, he was able to find a video. Right. Oh, that he had made? Yes. So okay. it's the first single off of this new album. And the video was dope. And I go, who did this? And he yep. goes, it's this really cool director that he goes, look, he the label knows. must have be putting money into this kid yeah. because. Well, it's capital. It, yeah. But yeah. still, it's hard to get money for a cool music video when you're first. Right, right. On your, your first, first thing. Yeah. Because usually they give you uh, eh, about 80K. Uh, and this will shock a lot of people who are like, what? Music videos? 80K? Yeah. yeah. They don't pay shh. They don't give you shit. Usually the music videos look like shit. And it, it, look, it still goes on for like big artists today because the big artists have the final say because that comes out of the back of their check. Mm -hmm. the, every musician has to pay for their own music video. So I, I, you know, I hate that I'm ruining this for you, but that's how they fucking, the label takes oh, yeah. away all their money, uh, these musicians. Um, that's why like you take uh, God's Country, Blake Shelton. Mm -hmm. Love that song. I think it's a mega, mega hit. Uh, you watch that video, it looks like it costs about $2. And you're like, dude, for that? It's just like one spotlight on him. Yeah. He's in a pickup truck just driving through the dirt and, and then singing outside of, of like a barn and then it's just a bunch of cutaways and you're like, what the fuck, bro? It's the biggest, it was one of the biggest country songs of the year and this is what you spent on this? Yeah, but don't they do the music video before they know that? So they're kind of like, well, we can't just... I don't know it's how... It's not like you make the music video after it's number one, you know what I mean? Kind of. You kind of do. Like, you take the Old Town Road. They did it afterwards. Okay. Um, and then they spent some money on that, and it was a great video. Because you get paid per stream now, too. So every time that that plays on YouTube, that counts as a music music stream mm -hmm. for your song as well. So mm -hmm. you get paid for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why you wouldn't be putting a little bit more money into it. But, uh, yeah, Blake Shelton said, fucking on God's Country. But the interesting thing about this kid was... The label put a really cool director on it. It was a really cool video. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, so he's like, dude, I'm going to have to do some fucking digging on this. Like, so how does our friend uh, play into it, though? Well, you know, if you are able to attach yourself to a great artist, right, or, or come in and say, hey, man, I believe in you and I believe in your career and I'm going to get you the best directors and make you the best music videos forever. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to get in with a company like that. Otherwise, the label does it for you, and you bounce around from production company to production company to director to director. Right. You don't know what you're getting, but with 
someone that you like and or trust, um, they're not going to let you down and say, all right, cool, man. I'm not going to fail you on this video. Right, right. Um, Because they were doing... I mean, they were personal fans of a lot of these artists back in the day, and so they would take them. Like, I, I remember, like, Panic at the Disco was one of them. And they just made the dopest videos for Panic at the Disco. And I was just like, oh, man. Remember that steampunk one before, like, steampunk was oh, yeah, yeah. really a thing? Yeah. And you were like, man, that was a great video. Yeah. That's what they do. So that, that's the advantage of doing it where you're like, hey, man, I believe in you. Just stay here for a long time. Because I think they do most of, like, the Young Money stuff, like Nicki Minaj, and they've had Ariana Grande for years and all that other stuff. But, right. uh, if you can find the next big thing, and to me, I was just like, yo, that kid's the next big thing. And I had to make that call yesterday. I was like, yo, go get him. Go find him. Yeah. Go find him. Because he's going to be there soon. He's going to be in, uh, I think, L.A. and Sacramento or something. Oh, yeah, he said. Yeah. Sacramento, I yeah. think. So he hit, he hit us um, up and was just like, hey, man, end of this month. that was yeah, the yeah. best time doing that podcast. Um, thanks again for having me. Couldn't have been a nicer kid. He's awesome. Great. Great. Um, but it's super rare where you're just like, Hey, yeah. So 2011 was what it was and it was fun. It was the band fun. Didn't he tell you about it? He did. Yeah. And so he said, Hey man, you've got to use this for your movie. Right. And I was like, Oh my God. Yes. Tried. Tried. And then we went and it was tonight. It was the song tonight. And he was trying to do the music video and I was just like, man. Uh, the other one was, uh, Macklemore ironically. That he told you about? Mm-hmm. And he tried to go up and get Macklemore. Out of, he tried to pick him off out of Seattle. And it was just like, man, there's this guy. He's awesome. And so I got this mixtape. And I was like, Phew. I mean, it was before the thrift shop and all that other shit. And I was like, and he was just hit after hit after hit on this fucking thing. Oh, yeah. And I was like, God damn. I was like, where is he? And he was like, Seattle. That's where, you know, Hana is from. Oh, and, that's uh, right. Yeah. So uh, I know he, they went hard. But, uh, yeah, if you believe in somebody like that, it could work out. Do it mm. But uh, Barnes Courtney, see you, brother. I see you. The video was dope. Yeah. His video was dope. I think it was called You and I. You and I is the name of it. And uh, the song? Yeah. Uh, Br- Br- Brandon shot me the video on, uh, I want to say Vivo. Okay. Which Vivo is a big, yeah. you know, machine. So uh, at least, I, look, uh, whatever happens with that, I don't, I, nothing I can do, but at least the label's put money into that kid. So that makes me excited. Yeah. Because uh, there was one that I was like, man, if there's one out there to deserve it, it's that kid. So I just think he's awesome. Mm-hmm. I do too. Uh, you know what else I think is awesome? Our sponsors put this whole shit wagon on the air, Jabes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give me, give me those sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me those sponsors. Let's get it going on. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, is our chief sponsor. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is giving you all the hits. All the hits. They got mattresses. They got pillows. Uh, they've got sheets. They've got pillowcases. They've got covers. They've got mattress covers. Mattress covers. Adjustable bases. Um, stuff. They got stuff there. I wish they made little mattress shoes, little tiny mattress shoes that I could walk around the house in. Oh. Wouldn't that be great? They need to make slippers. Yeah. They need to make slippers with the ghost pillow bottom. Come on Uh, now. Come on now. That would be the best. You're welcome, ghost bed. I just gave you that. You're welcome. These are the gifts that I give you on a daily basis on this show. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Where, as always, if you are military or a first responder... You get you, 15% off everything in the store. You get better deals than we get. Because we suck as human beings. We host, yeah. we host a fucking radio we show. Host, that's, that's you guys our are out service. saving lives. That's our service. Yeah. We're just sitting here fucking talking shit. Yeah. You guys they are out saving lives. Us. They don't give us. Nah, we don't need an extra 15%. Nah. So. What do we get, though? 200 bucks off. A, not a, bad. Ah, not off, bad. Off the, 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 uh, the Ghost Lux. $100 off the Classico. Not some bad. Some free pillows. As always at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They get a 36 month pay as you go. No interest program. No one on the internet is doing that. Doing it. Doing it. Doing it. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Four amazing flavors, grape, lemon, ridge, and orange. 
10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Rests on your bar top or countertop so you can just boom, boom, pop a couple squirts in and go. Go to strikeforceenergy.com today. Get yourself some energy. No carbs, no sugars. And uh, you can just uh, rip that open. It's a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. And then uh, put it in any drink available. Amazing, isn't it, Jabes? So amazing. They've got a uh, subscription a month, which we've had for four years, I feel like, at this point, um, where they just ship it to you. Um, that's it. I just get a. I just get the the four pack. Boom! I'm good to go for the month. Always have been. The four pack of all of those. Yep. Okay. All the different flavors. So. Change it up. Yeah. You don't want to get too stuck in one flavor. You do what you want. At Strike Force, you do what you want. Blammo, blammo, I don't know blammo, if that's their slogan, blammo, but it should blammo, be. Blammo, blammo. Uh, Strikeforceenergy.com, as always, uh, ships everywhere in the entire world, and you can use the promo code Revolution for twenty percent off. Last but not least, Jabe's. This is what you came for, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it to me. Yeah. Oh, you like it? Oh, that's nice, James. That's real nice. Um, whew. Whew. That hit me. Mm. That hit me a little hard today. All right. What are uh, we talking anything about? you need to be a real man in this life. Or a pregnant bush. Nope, nope. don't do that. Don't Good. do that. Shave it up. Shave it up with uh, straightrazors.com. Promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. You can get everything there. Kits, uh, safety razors. If you're worried about using a straight razor, get that safety razor. Get that safety razor. Get get a little something for the uh, the kitty, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why I say that, but I, I really like saying it. Get something for the kitty. What's that mean? I don't know. If you have a cat, small cat, or uh, just get it for someone else's pussy. Okay. You know, get it for the kitty. Okay. Uh, or it could be a K-I-D-D-I-E. Mm-hmm. You know, could like a child. Um, get it for the kid? Yeah, don't, oh, okay. don't uh, you know, maybe not use a straight razor on them. Mm-hmm. But uh, the neck, maybe. Maybe shave up the neck. I got a straight razor as a kid on the neck. Really? Yeah, from a young oh, age. Oh, yeah, from the, yeah. That's the, pretty standard practice. From the barber it is, mm-hmm. huh? Mm-hmm. All right. I didn't know if it was or not. I do that on our... Child as well? Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. Didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they threw a little talcum powder on the back of it after they were done. Oh, yeah, so they could brush off the hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. What does that do for it? Um, If you just use brush bristle on hair, mm-hmm. it kind of just moves it around. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Make yeah. your hair get stuck to the skin, so if you put the powder on, oh, that's real nice. Yeah, then they dust it off. it all off. They dust it off. Yeah, they're running a ticker now on this uh, Trump impeachment. They said they're up to 162 people who said that they, were, they would like to do it. How on, many do they the need? On the Democratic side. I don't know, but I think they, they have the, uh, look, they have the House, so if they wanted to, to do it, they could. Because I think, I think if the If they wanted to do it, they could. They do want to do it. I don't. I don't know. There is a you segment. You don't think all of them do. There, no. Yeah. I, I do not think Pelosi and them want to do this yeah, yeah. because again, it'll bury your candidates for the next year. You will not hear one word out of them. No one yeah, will yeah, care yeah. about your candidates. And then if you lose this, uh, or shit, uh, it, it'll probably drag on for two years. So it'll go into the next election. You will lose the election. Hmm. So I don't know what the hope is for that. Even if you got them out of there right during the second term. Um, since this keeps popping up here on the scroll, even if you got him out of there the second term, just thinking about this out loud, um, you're, you're going to have to deal with VP. So you're not, it's not like you get your, your own president in there. So what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I don't know why I do this. If it was something egregious, like, you know, Watergate or something, I guess. Mm-hmm. But uh, for Clinton, with getting his dick sucked, no, I was against it. Right. Um, and for this, whatever that like that, uh, I'm, I don't. This is dumb to me. Fucking dumb. So, if he w- if he if he was genuinely working with Russia on a collusion type of thing, I would have said yes for that. Sure, if but they had they evidence. Didn't, yeah. No, they they didn't. But uh, yeah. Um, but crazy to see see this going down. I wonder how the market's doing today. Oh shit, <sighs> that's bad, right? It's not good. I'm sure, an impeachment does not it's bode not, it's not well. Good. Um, but again, this, it's going to fuck their candidates over, man. Uh, and that's, we got some other breaking news. A lot of, a lot of weird shit going on today. What? Um, 
Apple computers mysteriously break down across all of Hollywood after a software problem, allegedly. Ooh. Man. You trying to jack some shit? What? Trying to jack another movie? Oh, is that what it... Maybe so- the Joker. Maybe they're trying to take that Joker movie. People are up in arms about this. About the computers going down? No, about the Joker movie. Oh, yeah, Maybe yeah. somebody's trying to fucking jack this thing right now. Um... I mean, it was it was big enough for Joaquin Phoenix had to make a statement yesterday. And what did he say? Because they look, they're, they're starting to screen this, and so they're getting reviews and all this shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, th- they're saying the movie is dangerous, right? Um, so they had to him and the director had to Todd, Todd Phillips who did all the Hangar movie, yeah. movies. Um. But he says, Todd Phillips says, I think we're aware of all these issues and we're concerned, but I don't think that's why we talk about it. Apparently, it's super dark. and uh, It looks super dark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it talks about, you know, the movie is essentially about the emptiness of our culture. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read his quote because I think it's interesting. Uh, it's not a responsibility to teach morality. Right. It's a movie, right? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's taking some heat from that. So they're saying it's dangerous how? Because of what? It's showing he... what a person could do if they were lonely and depressed. And the, one of the Aurora shooting victims uh, wrote a letter to Warner Brothers as well. Because they were showing the Joker, mm-hmm. the Joker movie. And that one, when, they, when that kid came up and lit the place up, the painted Joker like the Joker. Or Batman? Uh, it was Batman, but it was the one with the Joker in it. Um, oh, okay. Who was that? Was it Heath Ledger? Was it that long ago? No, I thought it was the Bane one. Ooh. Anyway. 2012 screening of Dark Knight Rises. Jamie, you're a... Fu- Bane. It's Bane. That was the Bane one, yeah. huh? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so now this, uh, this mom is coming out. And they're saying, look, we're calling on you to be a part of the growing chorus of corporate leaders who understand that they have a social responsibility to keep us all safe. Who's the corporate leader? Uh, Warner Brothers, in this case. Seven years have passed since that. I remember that. Fuck, man. I can't believe it was seven years ago. Remember that guy pretended to be crazy that James, uh, James Holmes was his name. Uh, he pretended to be crazy and he had all those crazy eyes. Mm-mm. And uh, They found out he was just... Nope, got to Dick. prison, was a yep. fucking pussy, and mm-hmm. like his entire life is good. Absolutely destroyed. Good. Which it should be. Good. Over good, 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 and good, over good. and over. It makes me happy when they live, because that's the worst. Oh, yeah, yeah. When they just like kill themselves or get it's killed, like, yeah. you're like, fuck you, dude. But for that kid who's got to live out the next 60 years in that fucking misery, like, oh, yeah. Have fun. We're all good with that. You deserve it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, look, I'm able to separate it, obviously, movies, because I'm in it. Um, I think we all should be able to, right? I mean, I think that's the point. Do you think something happens? Let me ask you that. During the Joker movie, mm-hmm. somebody shoots up something? No. In, in today's society? Personally, just to do it. no. Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. I guess we'll see. I think something fucked up is going to go down. During these movies? Mm, Why? I don't know, man. I, I, I just... Today's society and the culture, right? hmm I feel like everybody's kind of like one, just one snap away from going fucking nuts, right? Okay. And uh, I think you see all the shit that's plastered in the news all the, all the fucking time. It really elevates shit and ramps it up. Mm-hmm. And it causes people who might not normally go out and do something or might not be that crazy to be like, ah, eh, fuck it. That's my final straw about this. Or I relate to this and now I'm going to fucking do something about it. Whereas I don't think it was like that back in the day. Because you weren't jammed with social media in your face all goddamn mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. Um, people weren't shaming you on Instagram. Because uh, it gets more and more lonely and isolating as you get older. I mean, imagine a, you know, you're 12, you have your own Instagram account, people are calling you fat or ugly or whatever it is, right? Right. And that's just going to add to all this shit, which we didn't have. Mm-hmm. So it makes these little fuckers, you know, 
go crazy. Yeah, I mean, it does. I don't know. That guy uh, that shot up the movie theater. I think it's, it's mental illness, though. It's mental illness. I think so, yeah. I guess in social media. I guess. But that kid People... wasn't even mentally ill, apparently. Yeah. I don't know. I, look, I hope not. Fucking A, man. Um, I... It, People I hope should be not able to separate because, movies. Yeah, and, like I just. Uh, and I, I understand think we what Joaquin Phoenix is saying. Like, hey, man, I'm playing a character. This is fake. This is a comic book. It's not my responsibility to teach morality. Like, I, I get it. We went through this with uh, the censorship of albums and shit. Yeah. And, you know, putting the parental thing and, like, this right. is why. Yeah. Uh, that, that kind of censorship was crazy at the time, right? Yeah, I, do you remember the Marilyn first? Manson was the reason why da da da, and he's just like, what the, what the fuck, what right? Was, what was your first one? Do you remember? My first one, what album that you remember, like having the explicit lyrics on it, where you were like, oh shit. Um, oh, where they changed that thing? Uh-huh. I don't remember. So I do. It was for me. It was Appetite for Destruction, Guns and Roses. Maybe it was Jagged Little Pill. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, so I was a kid, and I remember. This other kid had it, and he yeah. just played it over and over in his room. We, w- we all went over there and listened to it. All, you know, we we're like, "Oh my god, this is crazy! We're not supposed to be doing this." Right? Do you know who that kid was? He was a preacher's son, too, who had it. Yeah. He got the bejesus kicked out of him later oh. on after they found that fucking thing. He got Jesus kicked into him. Yeah. <laughs> um, is what I think happens. <laughs> they don't want to kick jesus out Oof. they want to kick it in man i remember how crazy that was where i was like oh shit um yeah but remember that whole campaign against oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah and that was crazy and that wasn't that wasn't the answer either no that no. didn't really solve anything either no right so uh you know the censorship of form you know artistic expression is pretty dangerous the weirdest thing about this is seeing all this shit that's come out now in the last 24 hours about this movie, it's only going to push this past 100 million opening weekend. Oh, for sure. E- easily. For sure. Like, it won't even be close. Where they're just like, hey, man, this is going to make a gajillion dollars. Is this something you would see opening weekend? Yeah. Um, I don't know about opening weekend. I would see it. Okay. I would I, see it. I'd be in because it's Joaquin Phoenix and, like... Uh, he's the best thing that's... One of the best, for sure. For sure. Um... Yeah, man. All right, I'm going to say. But I'm happy that he was just like, it's not my responsibility and no apologies or or anything. You just can't. I, I'm going to say this, I think, because this comes out in two weeks. I'm going to say 125 opening weekend now. OK. And I would have said under 100. I would have said maybe but because of all this. 80 to 90 because of this. Mm-hmm. I think this jacks it up to 120, 125. Which they shot this on a relatively smaller budget, um, somewhere in the 80 range, I think, because it was so because, dark. And it was Todd Phillips. Yeah. They don't he, give him a lot. Well, he does it a lot because he wants the control. And that's right. the difference. Like you can, you can, take you a can do what budget. you want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you've got to take a smaller budget mm-hmm. for it. And uh, you, get, you get a lot of back end, which is what he did on the Hangover movies. And right. he absolutely raked. But um, I think, yeah, so he did the same with this. So. Whew. I'm sure every letter that comes in, he's just looking at his bank account, just waiting, just cracking the knuckles. Every time a letter comes in, yep, from someone or one of these yeah. things, man. So, whew. yeah, I'll, I'll go 125. That's a big boy number. Okay, but, but I'm gonna say 125. Okay, for sure. Uh, yeah, because I mean, fuck. What was the? I'm trying to think of the because this is uh, is this the this is the DC world, right? Jamie, yeah, Batman, um, yeah, Batman's the DC world. Okay, have they? Well, they had they had Wonder Woman. That was the last probably decent DC movie. DC makes good TV shows, bad movies. Yeah, good TV show. Our producer Jamie says uh, good TV shows, bad movies. Um, but the, the the Batman series was good with Christian Bale, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I don't know about the new one. The new one, by the way, and this is breaking news as well so i might as well throw it out there obviously it's robert pattinson Mm -hmm. who is the new batman Mm -hmm. Uh, ironically at the top of the show we talked about jonah hill he is signed on for it for what that's that's the question yes and so they're either saying they think it's the penguin oh god 
or the Riddler? Um, I don't um, know. I don't know if he would do the penguin. I don't either. He's very vain. <laughs> I'm not sure if he would do the penguin. And I don't know if anyone can do it better than Danny DeVito. <laughs> My God. So everybody's guess like speculating online and uh Oh god. <laughs> man, dude, I don't I uh it's it. got to be the penguin, I right? I love it. It's got to be the penguin. Again, I don't think he would do the penguin. I don't either. I don't think he would do the penguin. I don't either. I, uh, he he thinks he's a He would want to switch sexy it up. Gentleman. Yeah, and try to be the Riddler or something. See him walking around? Yeah. He thinks he's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot. Whew, that is a that's so a wild one. So you would huh? not take the penguin for sure. But yeah, so they're hey. saying he is he's gonna do it. But uh, there's two things stopping it. It says um, he wants his choice of character and he wants ten million dollars. Well, typically, and I'll I, if you're at home and you're you're saying to yourself, "Hey, man, ten million doesn't seem like that much for for one of these movies." They have a fucking rule with these superhero movies where you get a bunch of back end, but like the first one, they only pay you like. A quarter million, half a million dollars. To be in it? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. But they usually make you sign like an eight-picture deal. So like, look, financially it all works out for you in the long run, uh, as long as it does well. Right. Uh, If not, you know, you're kind of beefed. But uh, This budget was $55 million. Yeah. That's nothing. Nothing. And Bradley Cooper is a producer. B. Coops, yeah. I saw him on the red carpet the other day. Him and uh, Todd Phillips have a production company. Okay. So they're beef fries in real life. Got it, got it, got it. Um, which is a wild fit to me because if you would have looked at the hangover, right? And then direction of Of B Coop. Of B Coops and then him. And Todd Phillips is sort of following in that though. Looks like he's Yeah, he's doing to some do cool more. shit. He did uh, like War Dogs was cool, mm-hmm. ironically, with, with Jonah Hill. Yeah. Um but that was a cool movie. He's just a good director. Yeah. Even with the hangover, and that was the first time. A good director can do both. Yeah. But that was the first time with the hangover where I was like, man, this is a great looking comedy mm-hmm. aesthetically. Mm-hmm. Usually it's by. It's like pretty looking. Yeah. Shots are great. Usually it's by, uh, you know, comedy directors are usually comedy writers. Same with me, right? Right. I'm good enough to get the fucking movie made. Because um, I'm, I'm concerned about the comedy and jokes and all that other right, shit. Right, but right. Uh, cinematically, Todd Phillips is probably the best at. Uh, I, I think of the last maybe 15 years it, it, how a comedy looks aesthetically because um, those Hangover movies looked gorgeous. I mean, oh, yes. there were some shots that were like Michael Bay shit. Oh, like yeah. Lens flares and all that stuff. Uh, usually, yeah, it's a fucking, it's a comedy writer and it's like, hey, hey man, I care about Super the jokes bright. and that shit. Well, you care about the jokes and right. you want the dialogue to land right, and things right. like that. But there was, you know, Hangover had car crashes and mm-hmm. all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is, like, go look at Superbad compared to Hangover, just aesthetically. Oh, yeah. Not comedically. Oh, yeah. Comedically, I think Superbad was better. Than The Hangover? Mm-hmm. Here's what I'm saying about The Hangover. I think you don't have Zach Galifianakis. I don't know if you have. I don't know if you have a movie. Sure, probably. Sh- yeah. I think he made yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. And speaking of him, he's got a movie coming out. What? Between Two Ferns on Netflix. Yeah, it's out. Oh, it is out. It is out. You haven't watched that yet, have no, you? No, I haven't. You... I haven't. Watched it on my private account that you don't know about. You've not. You've not watched that. No, I haven't. I didn't know it was out. Yeah. Shit, why didn't you tell me? It just came out. Oh, it did? Last night, yeah. Really? I just saw it last night. Yeah. Okay. Shit. Before I went to bed. So. All right. We'll, peep, we'll peeps it. Peepsies? Yeah. I want to give that a, a little, a little pokesies. I love Zach Galifianakis. Do you know that he had the first Netflix original? Yeah, was it live from the Purple Onion? Mm-hmm. Which was so I, he's I, like in the family. Yeah, the very that was the very first movie, right? The very first Netflix original. Yeah, man, I bought that on DVD um, from Amoeba Records on Sunset. That's how amped I was about it, and we probably watched it four thousand times. Oh, it's amazing! Because that was when you could get away with shit. Where you just didn't care. It was a. Wasn't there a scene where he was just like his weed, you know, those uh, a pipe just fell out of his jacket like onto mm-hmm. the stage, and he was just like he just laid down. And yeah, he was just like drunk, not really, but drunk, you know. Yeah, he was getting there in a few scenes. I think so. I think he said he was. Did you ever watch that? Was it called Comedians of Comedy with him? Um, where I loved it. So did I. 
but he just kind of walks off like midway through the movie and you're like, hey man, where did you go? Was that yeah. real or not? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what you did there. And yeah, if that's he loves true, the Kaufman but, type situation. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what his whole deal is. Um, He's just a weird guy. I love it. I heard oh, he was yeah. living here for a while. In North Carolina. Oh uh, well, he's from North Car- from North Carolina. Oh, he is. Yes. All right. Oh, that would that would make sense then. Mm. Um, yeah. but why live? I you know, if you're big time like that, I guess you can Steve's on it. <laughs> Where's Steve's on? Kentucky. He's in Kentucky. Find me Steve's on. Bring him to the studio. Yeah. So I, I he's in Kentucky. Maybe you, look, you get to the point where you just say fuck it. Um, I talked to a guest about that the other day, where I was just like. You know, live where you want to live at this point, and technology is technology, so. Yeah, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. unless you're auditioning every day, then don't do that. Yeah. Um, sending in tapes and all that other bullshit is, uh, is not sweet, but uh, uh, you know what it is? Righteous Gemstones. <sighs> love, love, love it. That Told keeps, you. Whew, keeps just ramping up, man. You were ready to write it off. I wasn't, re- I, wasn't, I wasn't ready to write it off. I was just well, like, Well, you were eh. just like, what is this, right? Yeah. But with every one of his shows, it's like, you need, you need a couple episodes. This? Yeah. Like, what are they doing? He spun it down. I was all in after the first episode where I was just like, I think he went really hard the first episode of like, this is what the fuck it is. Whereas with Vice Principles and this one, it was in, you got to stick with it. Edie's everywhere, by the way. Everywhere, and she's—I'll have to say on the on the episodes, she is everywhere. Yeah, she's always she's in every single scene, whether she's talking or not. Yeah, she's so good. Because she's good. A friend of the show. She's been in—I think I put her she's in her first movie. She's, like, she's been in like six movies. Interesting. You're drawn to her, whether you know her or not. Yeah. Um, but listen to our Marin, Mark Marin. Mm-hmm. Um, it's rad to see all this happening for her. Yeah. She's fucking she has hilarious, been dude. She's Peters in all the St. James movies, by the way. On it for forever. Yeah. Ever. Ever. And continues to do the shows at Groundlings. I mean, she Yeah. Still does yeah, all that, that shit, dude. Still doing the one man shows. She loves it. One which man I improv cannot shows. Cannot understand. At at Groundlings, which oh, is Oh, they do brutal. full plays. Oh yeah. Full improvisational plays. That are like an hour and a half, two hours. Um, which is bananas to me. That she's still doing that. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It probably keeps her sharp, though. But it's one of those things where you go like, oh, so if you made it, if you had enough money, would mm-hmm. you still do this? And it's like, I would like to say yes. I would still be doing the podcast, right? But you oh, get yeah. so busy and you're like, would I? I don't know. No, I would for but sure. But she's doing it every every night, yeah. every weekend. Yeah, yeah. she's doing all, all of it. Yeah. All of the things. And you're going to start seeing her pop up in a lot of movies, um, which is great. Yeah. Which is great, but uh, yeah, I'm all in on the gemstones. I like so it. Good. I like it a lot, man. We, th- I'm getting to the point now, though, where it's about to end. And, and you're kind of like, what is? What's the next? Thing? I mean, the the uh, introduction of Goggins into this <laughs> miss the misbehaving song. I mean, misbe that misbehaving song should be everywhere. I, can you buy that on iTunes? I'm sure. If so, if we could put that on the back of this episode, it'd be great. Oh my God, that'd be it awesome. It was a like child's Christian song that they invented. They and I, I read an article. Very what, Johnny it was and Edie, Marie. It was Edie and Danny McBride that wrote it. That wrote it. Mm-hmm. Um, running through the house uh, with pickle in my mouth. Yep. Misbehaving. Misbehaving. So good. Oh, I, could that be nominated for best song? I want no. I think it's gonna be. I from wore a movie. lipstick and I got caught shaving. Yeah. <laughs> Misbehaving. Oh my gosh! But uh, the way that they. Oh, it's a real country. She was a real country singer, by the way, who, who? sang that song. Oh, uh, the girl that's yeah, the in it. Yeah, the actual girl who's in it was a country singer. She happens to be a lights out actress as well. What's her name? Edie tagged her in something on, on Instagram, and I looked her up, and I was like, oh, shit, you're she a real country singer. She looked familiar, I know, I know. but I, with all the stuff, I couldn't. Yeah, same here. She's got like a wigs and all this other stuff, but she's a real country singer. And I was like, ah, that makes so much sense. Absolutely. If you haven't seen this show, go and watch this show uh. on HBO, and you can get caught up. Um, I think the first season's like nine, maybe, or ten. So we're, we're getting towards the end. That's the only disappointment I have, though, is that I don't know what the next comedy thing is that's going to come out. 
the next comedy thing. I mean, I'm I was sh- waiting for this. Right, and right, then right. It came out and it delivered, and uh, yeah. now I'm like, shit. What else? Because nobody, nobody can make that aggressive type shit. Mark Maron even said that on his show. He was like, dude, nobody can make this shit today. No, he's the last one that's kind of able to do it unless they give Louie another. There's deal. been male nudity in every single episode, which I love. Um, and then or a horse. Wait, well, so here was the, here was the comment. So. Uh, because I follow Dan McBride on Instagram as well. Uh, on on his Instagram, he was like, hey, man, somebody wrote in and was like, I was a little disappointed there was no male nudity in this episode. And he wrote back and goes, well, there was a donkey dick. <laughs> there was. There was. I was like, is that going to be the penis for this episode? Because there's one in every one, right? So far. So the the horse one yeah. was the penis for but that episode. But he physically wrote back to this dude, well, there was a donkey dick in this episode. Love it. The best. This is one of the only shows where I can almost see them in the writing room because I know Edie, yeah. right? Well, they so go could, to his house. It's yeah, his house. and I could just see them like throwing weird shit like that around and yeah. like writing, misbehaving, and just laughing their fucking asses oh, off. God, that's what it feels like. Yeah, this show is like you could just tell that they had a lot of fucking fun and that they're doing things just to be like we think this is funny you know what i mean like having someone stand up and just like flop completely buck naked yeah right in the camera that's what i did and that's what makes me love it so much where it was like like, i think this is hilarious i can do do whatever i want nobody gives a shit the financiers don't care let's do this exactly it's like somebody on fire let's you know i have a fucking burn vic out there just giving a full speech yeah but gemstones greatest thing. greatest i'm not yeah uh, look i'm in on the gemstones i can't i can't say enough about them um yeah man so th- this thing is still updating you're up to 167 now for people calling for it I, this look this could go down and the thing is we're taping so close to our release yeah that w- that i mean we're we're right in it uh 70 have said no so 165 say yes and, and 70 have said no did you find out how many we need zero republicans support it i'm not sure i mean obviously. this is it, literally this is all going on right now so i i haven't even had time to read up on this or study mm-hmm. or anything and i'm like it just keeps flashing on a scroll and you're just like what the fuck is this real you know yeah um and i, I don't know that answer i don't know that answer um, I'm going to give this uh, revolutionary figure of the day away, Jabes. You're going to give it away? I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away. Okay. Um, I'm going to give it to Mel Brooks on this one. Um, Did he die? No, Mel Brooks is still alive. Okay. Still alive. But uh, there was a big debate about comedy the other day and where it's headed and if Mel Brooks could exist in today's world, his movies and stuff. And uh, the resounding answer was no. And everybody said, no, you could not make those movies today. Mm, yeah. And I, I, think, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair as well. To say, yeah. But the great thing about Mel Brooks is that we have a wealth of movies to go back and watch of oh, his yeah. that still hold up to this fucking day. And I think for the future, I think this is how fucked up it's going to get in the future, that they're going to look back at this and be like, this is too crazy and probably ban one or two of those movies. I don't know if they let Blazing Saddles, because they're banned in books and all that shit. Like, I don't know if they let Bla- Blazing Saddles 40 years from now, right? How do they ban it, though? Well, so I was thinking about this. You know, they're tearing down statues and ripping down songs and everything else. Uh, that, the, the woman who was singing the national anthem from the 30s oh, yeah. at uh, the hockey rink, and they took down her statue mm-hmm. and, and all of that shit because she sang a, a song in the 1930s that was racist or whatever, right? I think in the future... Everyone will be so sensitive that I bet you one of one or two of his fucking movies get banned. That's what I'm saying, though. How could they ban it? Just rip it from existence. Huh. I mean, look, it happened yeah. with Cocksucker Blues with Rolling Stones. Uh, Tim Morris did send that in, though, and I have a copy of it. Nice. Digitally. Thanks, Digitally. Tim. But uh, I, th- I think that's what's going to happen, man. Um, and I was trying to think of anybody else. Look, it'll definitely happen in my my shit, but uh, I was trying to think of anybody else that like from that era who started that 
young doing it. And I don't know if there is anybody else besides Mel Brooks who was doing crazy shit like that. Because Blazing Saddles was like the 70s. And I didn't see that shit till I was like 20 probably. Yeah. I don't know about you. Uh, no, I saw it way later. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, shit, I don't know. What do you think? You think, you think so? That it gets banned, mm-hmm. gets canceled. I, I think I, if things keep going the way that they're going, but I also feel a uh, dropping off of this craziness. We'll see, man. I, I wonder. Cancel culture. I, I couldn't imagine him walking into a studio right now pitching Blazing Saddles. No, he can't right now, but I just don't. I don't know about them banning it. We'll see. After we'll see. I think, I think a lot of shit's just going to, like, a lot of our history and everything's just going to be ripped away. Yeah. Well, that's already definitely happening. Yeah. Yeah. So what movies and books are next, yeah. I think. Yeah. And then some songs, you know, probably some songs. Uh, all of your uh, Primus that you love pr- might be gone too, Japes. So <laughs> you might want to say goodbye to them. Yeah. That's, a, that's all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> what a weird day all yeah. the way around. Uh, I don't know what's gonna. I don't know what's gonna happen with all of this. Mm-hmm. And the weirdest thing about it to me is having these shows seven days a week between this and Drinking Bros. Is like whenever you're doing a story that's going on as the show's going on, you're like, shit. By the time this airs tomorrow, there will be an answer. There will be something. I just don't have it. Yeah, man. I don't have that answer right now. I know. So you're watching it, kind of guessing. You're like, eh, what are the numbers looking like? Right. Yep. Two thir- uh, Okay. So you, you need two thirds of the super majority. Jamie's saying. Yeah. As it stands, there's 435 members of the house, so two thirds. You're looking at uh, somewhere, somewhere around 300. Yeah, three and change a little bit, maybe 325. That they need to get to. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That I don't. Seems I don't like think a lot. Ha- yeah, I don't think they have it. Oh wait, two thirds. You say two thirds? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I- Two, so you're probably getting two something then. Um, yeah. Man, that's a tough one. Senate, it's not going to pass. Right. For sure, because they've got the Senate. Right. But, uh, weird. Maybe it's a tactic just to say we tried to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be something that, like I said, they're going to use in, uh, in the election. I guess so, but what's the... Because you, you could always counterpoint that and say, hey, man... They tried to impeach me. Yeah, go for yeah, this yeah, and this yeah, and this. Yeah, They're yeah. going to try to do it for everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wonder. True. Because we're. We, Could backfire. We've been talking uh, all along um, for the last week or so on both shows that uh, um, Elizabeth Warren is the front runner now. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if people are making statements as this is going on. You need 287 people is what they're saying. Uh, all right. She hasn't made a post in about 19 hours. So I think if she hasn't made a post, then I, I, I think she's probably in the camp of. Don't. Not at this point. I mean, you're getting real close now. You're, you're 13 months away from the election. I would guess that she wouldn't want to. Especially if she's in the lead. And it's not really her uh, platform. Yeah. The whole thing is like not talking too much right, right, right. shit and focusing on her own stuff and civility and all this shit. So uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Weird times, Jabes. Weird times. Oh, yeah. Weird show. I, I, oh, like sh- yes. I like shows like this where a lot's going on in our nation where you're like, hey, what the fuck is this? What's going on over here? What's up? Yeah. What's up? We got a little something to chat about, you know? Right, right. Misbehaving. Uh, misbehaving. Put, the, put that on the back of this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.